If you want to buy a game for $7,000, that's your business. But some of us would like to not go into debt to enjoy a classic. Ports of older games are a tricky business. On one hand, they can be considered a lazy thing for a franchise and people will complain that we should have gotten something like, I don't know, another new Metroid game with realistic Samus animations. Gets them every time. On the other hand, they do prevent some games from going up in price drastically because some people actually do want to play a beloved classic, like, oh, I don't know, in Name a Dreamcast Game. So, let's start off with a question. Why should we have ports at all? Well, I'd like to show an example using Magic the Gathering. Sterling Grove, which is a Magic the Gathering card, only had one iteration, and was $16 in price before it got a reprint in Modern Horizons 2 which made it worth two dollars. Basically, it allows other people to play things that would otherwise be bank breaking in order to get. It's like gatekeeping, but instead of toxic people, you have toxic prices. And God help you if you end up damaging the disc somehow, since that could ruin your game that costs a hundred dollars. Words of wisdom from a person who damaged one Melee disc, one Gales of Darkness disc, and one Lost Skies of Arcadia disc. Don't remind me. Also, say hello to Brawl's Glass Joe durability. However, don't you feel like it's a disappointment to fans who already have the console and the game in question? Why bother porting it when the fans obviously would have them at this point? Well, it would give younger people a chance to get into the fanbase of these expensive games, or even bring up hype for another installment. And risk a cringy fanbase like the Undertale fandom? Gets them every time too! Or the unwashed masses into the less crazy fandoms? Well, it's not that bad. Peanut Sands. However, I think a cringy fanbase is worth the risk if it helps an entire franchise or game thrive. Heck, it's how Fire Emblem came back from the brink of death and helped a fanbase blossom. You forget there was a lot of old guard versus new blood arguments because of Awakening and Fates. However, it also shows that the series isn't dead, and that there is a chance for a revival, such as what happened with the Rune Factory franchise. And remember how well some people acted towards that? Was Rune Factory, or you know, probably a mobile game or something. Yeah, that's what it's got to what it looks like. For the playing later this Get out of here! Oh, hey, hey guys, Rune Factory Five. If you thought Rune Factory was good, yeah, some people were toxic about it, but it doesn't change my point. Oh, and looking at the prices of some of these games does not help matters as some of these prices can be as bad as Match the Gathering cards, if not even worse. You think I'm joking about going into debt just to play one of these games? Oh my gosh, it's $10 above 60 It's literally gonna break my funding! Oh, if only there was some kind of emulator. Okay, fine. So a lot of these problems can be circumvented by emulating, but that does not mean it should be the only solution because of a few things. One, not every computer can run emulation the same, nor is it alright for the fans to have to pick up the backbone of a company when they don't release another game in the series. Furthermore, on consoles that are portable like the Switch, it would actually be a benefit to put some of these games on there since laptops are weaker than gaming PCs. What benefit is there for a port instead of a full-blown remake? Why bother porting a game to the Switch or further on consoles when a full-blown remake could have more content, better gameplay, or even extra features? 
because not only is it cheaper to make a port rather than a full-blown remake, since you have most of the outline, but you don't have to recreate every asset from scratch. Furthermore, some games which don't have a lot of fans supported online, you're out of luck. Hello, Rhythm Thief at $5,000! Also, some remakes do not preserve the original game, such as Diddy Kong Racing DS. Clumsily having to switch between touch controls and traditional controls is not good game design. And unlike the country ports, Diddy Kong Racing doesn't really survive the process with the magic intact. Conquer, live and reloaded. It's a fully functional game, but the charm of the original got off a few stops back. XIII or 13 remake. It just lacks everything that made the original game so fun. And in a lot of cases, the things it tries to replicate, it does worse off. And Warcraft 3 Reforged. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? The only thing Reforged about that remake was my view of Blizzard's incompetence. And that should be about everything for this video. If you don't mind me. <sighs> I'm gonna go take a nap. And I'm going to go fill someone's houses with Volbeats. <laughs>